Lord be with you. Amen. It's wonderful to be back among you. Thank you so much for your prayers and your support and understanding of as I've taken renewal time. I'm happy to report I'm renewed and uh, and uh, I'm very uh, thankful and uh, looking forward to uh, entering into. If you, it, it feels strange to look forward to Lent, but um, but I am um, and am anticipating uh, God's blessings for us all. And uh, so thank you so much. Thank you for coming out to our Ash Wednesday service. Uh, this is the service where we remember our mortality. And m most of the world doesn't want to do that. And I understand why. But then we have a lot of reminders. Uh, we've had some reminders of, our, of the fragility of life, uh, both here uh, down east and in the Ukraine and uh, in, the, in, in all different places. So let's be thankful tonight for life uh, as we, um, and for the life of Jesus, whom we come tonight to worship and who has called us here. Will you join with me in the call to worship and stand if you're able? And we greet those online with us as well. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast. With all our hearts we return to the Lord. For God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. If you're a sinner this evening, then you should sing the next song. I'll be singing it, because I know I am. And... Uh, so, anybody, if, uh, but don't worry if I look out and I see you're not singing, I'll just assume you don't like to sing. I won't assume you're a... <laughs> Number 340, come ye sinners, poor and needy.
seated. I don't remember why, but I, at one point I was researching something about this hymn and learned that the refrain was added some years after the verses that um, people used to sing this one, just the first three stand, the first the verses on the left side, and uh, and and then later decided to add the refrain. But I'm so moved every year, especially by three and four. Come weary and heavy laden, lost and ruined by the fall. But then it says, if you tarry, what is that? If you if you wait, if you hesitate, you'll never come at all. Speaks to you too, doesn't it? And then four, let not conscience make you linger. Now, why would conscience make you linger? Sorry, William, I've gone to preaching. So I can't, I can't help it. No. But why would conscience make you linger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or um, nor of fitness fondly dream. That means don't think that you can't come to God until you're right and fixed and fit spiritually. Don't wait until then. Because all that he requires is to feel your need of him. That's powerful. <laughs> and thank you for seeing that uh, with faithfulness and, and, and beauty this evening. As we now turn to, and you keep your hymnal with you because we're going to look at 785. And before we read this Psalter, I just want to say a word of gratitude and thankfulness and welcome to William Young. Uh, William is no stranger to you. He is the um, uh, a son of this blessed church uh, and comes from a generation of, of Ann Streeters and, um, and has been uh, through lay speaking classes and uh, in, in years uh, past and, and has a weekly experience bringing the word of God to the men at Loaves and Fishes. And so um, we thank you, William. Um, we're looking forward to your word, and we're thankful for you and, and, uh, and looking forward to your guiding us into a holy Lent. Uh, Psalm 51, uh, no musical response. Just uh, read responsively with me, please. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sins is ever before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless in your judgment. Behold, you desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Make me hear with joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Cast out my and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me a willing spirit. Deliver me from death, O God, God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. Lord, Lord, and my mouth shall For you have no delight in sacrifice. Were I to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise.
Tonight our scripture reading is from Joel chapter 2, verses 1 through 2, and then verses 12 through 17. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. For a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a great and powerful army comes. They're like never been before of old, from of old, nor will there be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your heart and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering. For the Lord your God, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, Call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, and the, gather the children, even infants at the breasts. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among nations. Why should it be said among the people, where is their God? This is the word of God for us, the children of God. Thanks be to God. Good evening. I would like to thank Pastor Taylor and those here in the sanctuary tonight for joining us on Facebook live stream. I want to take the opportunity to thank the Lord tonight for allowing me to stand in the pulpit tonight and for Taylor giving me this awesome privilege. Tonight, the title of the message is A Prophet of Repentance. In Joel chapter 2, verses 1 through 2, and verses 12 through 17, Joel basic message to Judah is straighten up who because of their sin was about to face judgment we must learn that our sin in our lives require repentance when we are in continual sin we lack repentance in our lives it will eventually lead to God's judgment because of the holiness of God he must judge sin but God also is a God that brings restoration in verse 1, the word of God says the word of the Lord came to Joel. Some have called Joel the prophet of religious revival. He has then for Judah and for us tonight to come to the place of repentance. And what is that word repent? It is a changing of one's direction. And so here he is calling on them to turn and for us to turn from our sins and turn back to God fully. There can't be any true revival in our lives and in our nation until we turn away from our sins. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, pray and seek and crave my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. In our psalm today, tonight, Psalm 51, David, after having Uriah killed in battle and committing adultery with the Bathsheba, he cries out humility in humility before the Lord, wanting the Lord to create in him a clean heart and a right spirit within him and asking that the joy of his salvation to be restored. Do you, have, do you want to have a clean heart tonight? Do you want to have the joy of your salvation restored to your lives? During this season of Lent, in verse 13, listen to what Joel says. Tear your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God. He is gracious and merciful. He is slow to anger 
and abounding in loving kindness. John the Baptist in the wilderness, brothers and sisters, preached a message of repentance. John says, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus on one occasion warned the people, unless they repent of their sin, they would likewise perish. Then Peter in his sermon at Pentecost commanded the early church to repent and be baptized. God is our only hope. God wants your hearts tonight, not some religious expression. God wants your prayers that are heartfelt. And God wants genuine devotion, not smug declarations. God doesn't delight in judgment tonight. But he brings the sinner or the disobedient believer to full repentance. As in just a little while, we will take the ashes in a symbol of the cross on our foreheads. And during these 40 days of reflection and self-examination of our mortality before God, have the Holy Spirit to show those places in our lives where sin hides and forsake it and allow the Holy Spirit to draw you closer to God, grace. Seek to develop the, as richness in your prayer life. And these ashes are to remind us tonight that we are dust. The Bible says that Man, God created man out of the dust and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And we are mortal. And one day we will all step into eternity. But the question tonight, will you be ready when that time comes? In the and so let us think about that question. Are you ready for that time when you will step into eternity? Because we're not guaranteed tomorrow. And so, think about that during these 40 days of Lent. And so, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, William. Bless you. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, we are indeed called to repentance, and that is exactly what... Uh, we do now repent of our sins and mark ourselves uh, so that we might remember that we belong to Christ, that the symbol of the cross is upon us. So I will read to you an invitation that goes back many hundreds and hundreds of years in the church, an invitation to a holy Lent. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, self-denial, by reading and meditating upon God's holy word, to make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our mortal nature, we now come before our Lord and receive the cross. <clears throat> I'll now bless these ashes with a simple prayer of thanksgiving. And then I invite you to come as you do uh, in the communion uh, pattern. Uh, and so our ushers uh, will need you to guide us. Sterling, you're back there, aren't you? And so if you'll, you'll follow Sterling and he'll um, send you around. 
And then uh, after you've received your ashes, you are more than welcome to, um, to pray at the rail or pray in your pew as others come forward and prepare yourself for a holy Lent. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be a sign of our mortality and penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the people said, Amen. Amen.
You may be seated. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let us pray. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness during this Lent, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in times of need. Our closing hymn is, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. I invite you to stand. the tradition at the end of the Ash Wednesday service to go and depart in quiet and peace. And so I'll go ahead and take the moment on behalf of all of you to thank William and tell you what a wonderful message and how grateful we are for you. I know uh, we are very blessed by your word, by the word God has laid upon your heart tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Candace, and to all those uh, live streaming and sound and everybody. Uh, and as you go forward, may you go to Begin your Lent, and may this silent uh, reflection as you go forward help you start Lent in that spirit of silent reflection. And receive this prayer as a benediction and closing prayer. O God, your glory is always to have mercy. Be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways. And bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen.